Hello, I'm Liam from Coventry City of Culture Policing Team and I'm here at Lloyd House today and I will be interviewing Sir Dave Thompson from West Midlands Police. So do you mind just telling us what you do and who you are? Yeah, so I'm Mr. David Thompson, I'm the Chief Constable of West Midlands Police. What has your experience been of Coventry's year as City of Culture? Well, it's been a really exciting time in Coventry. Uh, I've experienced it both as a member of the public, um, in terms of some of the events and things I've seen there, but also from the police inside. Um, and I think from my, my, my perspective really, the city culture is incredibly important because it generates the brand of Coventry. It, it makes more people outside the city aware of what fantastic things are going on. It generates lots of interest in the economy. But within Coventry, I think it's made people get involved, go and see things. You know, whatever they want to see, there's been so many things on offer. And it's given the city a real buzz and vibrancy, which I think has been really hard to do because of it's taken place during the pandemic. But for me, it's been great watching the great projects we've done as part of it as a police force, the brilliant events we've seen in the city, and the way it's brought Coventry to life. So that's been my experience, both in terms of the police, but also somebody who's been to see things there. Like. Have there been any surprises you weren't expecting? Well, um, the thing you don't know about the city of culture is that you bring lots of creative people together in a place and say we're going to have a city of culture and creative people with creative ideas. So some of those things have been interesting for us. So we did the Artists in Residence here, which was a really important project West Midlands Police did that enabled us to explore our relationships with young people and policing. I uh, didn't really know how that was going to work out when we started it. it it's been brilliant. We've also seen things like the mural that we did at the side of Little Park Street for the homelessness stuff. Uh, that's been great. I've seen Colombian circus actors as a member of the public and of course recently the Real Store and then we've had all sorts of different concerts. So what's been great has been arts and culture really knows no boundaries does it? Lots of new things that people have thought up. So it's been a bit of a year of discovery I think as we've gone along. So there have been lots of surprises but they've all been good. How do we make the most of the opportunity the City of Culture title has given us and bring about change in how we connect with communities to reduce crime? I think that's a great question. It's been a question I think we've been learning through the year. So what we want to do as policing is create a connection with people. We want people to talk about to us, don't we? We want to find ways that young people want to engage with us so we can talk about the issues they face, so we can deliver better policing, but also we can build relationships. So I, I think some of the things that I've learned from it is, first of all, we've underestimated arts and culture as an area to, to, to connect because there are so many ways that particularly young people, particularly different groups will work, uh, can express themselves through arts and find a way of talking about difficult and challenging issues in a way that makes them feel safe. And I think we've really underestimated that as an area of work. I think the other area is that, you know, is, is, is actually pro properly making sure that when we have big events like this, that we put dedicated people against it to exploit the opportunities. So, you know, because you've been part of a, a dedicated police team that's been looking to make it a success, but to try and draw policing into these opportunities. And I think we will have similar events that take place across the force. And I think that's what we're hoping to do. But I think in Coventry, we've left a legacy, haven't we? That the, the, while there is a new city of culture will be at Bradford in the future, we keep a little bit of a run now until Bradford takes over. And I think we'll use that time to make sure we build on the foundations in Coventry already. I understand you're retiring soon. How do you see our involvement in Coventry City of Culture reflected in your legacy for West Midlands Police and the national policing role? Okay, well, I, I mean, I, I, I'll, when I retire, I'll be just in the Chief, just short of seven years. And uh, I made a decision to stay for two more years after retirement. 
uh, for two reasons. One was City of Culture and one was Commonwealth Games. Because it has been a very exciting time for us as a region. And so, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, my legacy is for other people to judge. But we, what we did get, I think, out of City Culture was a real feel good about Coventry, a real buzz about the city. You know, we want to ensure that all our towns and cities thrive economically to create jobs and opportunities for people. I think City Culture's done that, and I'm really proud of the part we've played. But I'm also really pleased we used it to build connections with people who don't ordinarily feel close to placing. The, um, the Barrister Bridges project, I think, was something particularly I thought was exciting that we did. Um, but, but recently, the Homelessness Project as well. And it's shown us there are things we can do that are not the obvious things in policing that can connect people to what we, we do as well. And of course, you know, all the great events that offices have been at connecting with the public has been fabulous. So it's been an amazing year. How do we stay approachable and accessible as a modern police force, especially with communities who are currently less engaged with us? Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a really big challenge, isn't it? They're, they're, one of the challenges we've got as any institution, not just policing, is that it, it, you know it's easier to get a lie or fake news around quicker than it is the truth. People form opinions in seconds. It's out there on social media. There, there's so many things going on. And uh, we have to, I think, be responsive to that. So, uh, so I think we have to constantly be looking for what's the best ways of trying to find a way to connect differently with communities. We're doing a project here at the moment in the, in the force, working with influencers from the black community to have conversations with uh, black influencers around policing that will ripple out and reach out to many more people than we would if we turned up and sat in a room to try and have a conversation with people. Um, if you look at some of the projects we've done through City Culture, again I come back to Barrister Bridges, but it's created accessible ways of having conversation, creating material for people to discuss things. Um, sometimes the police will be a bit traditional, you know, we might put it on Twitter or on Facebook or we'll have a local meeting. And I think what we've got to do with the very dynamic communities we've got is constantly looking at what are the mediums and ways that they talk about things, where are they having the conversations, and we've got to find a way of being in that space. And I think we've done some of that through city culture. It's influenced some of the stuff we're doing as a force to go forward. The Commonwealth game has already started to bring like-minded community members together. How will the Commonwealth Games help us better connect with communities and reduce crime? Okay, so there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a difference in Commonwealth Games and City Culture. If I describe the City Culture as a, a kind of constant rumble with big moments throughout the year, but a constant rumble, Commonwealth Games is going to feel like a huge bang and then it'll be over in 10 days. Okay, so um, the, the but it's a very different policing operation for us. So City Culture has been working with the organisers, getting the most of the city. Commonwealth Games is, is, is in reality a very large security operation for, for a 10 day period. So I think what will it do for us as a region? The first thing it's going to do is it's going to put a spotlight on the West Midlands and Birmingham in particular and make people look at this area very differently. I think it's going to make people in the area a little bit like city culture think, oh my goodness, look at this fantastic thing that's going on. That will happen on opening ceremony night because the opening ceremony I think will be incredible. I think people will be in awe of what happens and they'll suddenly get excited about the place. And then of course we've got a very large policing operation. We have lots of police officers, up to 3,000 on our busiest day we're, we're, uh, from all over the country here. And it'll be a really good opportunity for our police officers to engage with the public because when we play other sport events like football, we're there because there's probably going to be a bit of trouble and people don't come to see the athletics or the Commonwealth Games to get in an argument, either. they come to have a great time and so we'll hopefully be part of that visitor experience. So the big thing for me for Commonwealth Games is it'll change the reputation of Birmingham and the West Riverlands. It'll be an incredibly exciting 10 days with people coming from all over the world and there'll be plenty of opportunities to interact with the police who are out about making sure everything is safe.